Barack Obama is calling us. These were world-class players. And then you get to the professional game, but it still is a frustrating battle. It's like, we were rock stars. Hi, I am Heather O'Reilly, former American international. I totally love football. I love watching it. I love playing it. Some of my most meaningful and closest relationships are, are through football. Uh, I feel very privileged that this sport sort of found me. I think, you know, the most uh, pressing issue that I have faced is gender differences between men's football and women's football. When I was a young player in the U.S., I had so much opportunity. I had the same opportunity as the boys, and you can't say that everywhere in the world, but for me personally, I had wonderful girls teams to play on, I had great coaches, and then when I went to uni, I had really good coach at University of North Carolina, Anson Dorrance, legendary program, I felt like everything was equal. And then you get to the professional game. And the difference between the men's and women's professional game, the difference in pay, the difference in field conditions, the difference in respect and marketing and, and everything that surrounds the game is just so different. And it's 2019 and you wouldn't think that there would be as much disparity, um, but that's been the most uh, disappointing thing that I've seen in my career. And it's frustrating because we make all these strides and then you feel like it's a couple steps back again. So. I hope that that continues to improve. And the leadership uh, needs to really step up. And in football, that's FIFA. And you know, in, in the US, it's the US Soccer Federation. Somebody has to step up to break this vicious cycle because uh, if they don't, we're always gonna be chasing and, and a little bit behind. We see that with uh, the win bonuses that are offered for the World Cup. Uh, FIFA increased the win bonuses for the women and that's great, but they increased the men's even more. So the percentage became actually increased, but because they gave the women a little bit more, I think that they expected to be celebrated, but really they created more inequality. I think when I do face um, inequalities with gender, I do think that it devalues your efforts a little bit as an athlete. And, you know, we put the same as, as men's footballers in terms of the way that we train, the way that we take care of our body, the way that we go after excellence. And it sort of makes you feel uh, like a second class citizen and, and that just doesn't feel good for anybody. And I think that we've taken so many steps forward as female footballers, but it still is a frustrating battle. It's like, it's always a battle. In the US, uh, you have a lot of respect for the women's national team because we've been able to win three World Cups. Uh, across the globe, I know that the respect isn't there as much. And it's hard for people to get behind women's football if they can never watch it. And so it just needs to be more accessible. Um, and then, you know, with that comes familiarity of the players and people can really get behind teams and, and personalities. But if you can't see it, how are you going to be a fan? So the visibility needs to improve. The World Cup only comes every four years, so it is a really important time for FIFA and the governing bodies. It, and broadcasters to really do it, do it big and do it right. And I think that they are, for the most part. It's kind of in between the World Cup cycles that there needs to be continued investment because uh, people lose interest, you know, after uh, this one special month, you know, every four years. So, yeah, it, it is really important for them to use this. And it does feel like this one's a little bit of a tipping point. But then again, we've said that times before. So uh, when we won it in 2015, we had parades in the streets of New York City, Barack Obama is calling us, I went on stage with Taylor Swift, like we were rock stars and like we thought that we had really made it and then you know a couple months later you go back to your professional club environments and there's the same lack of investment and uh, and you know lack of visibility uh, to watch the games etc. So uh, it's a constant battle but we think that we keep moving the needle and we're proud of that. I don't really understand when people don't think that it's a high level. I think, you know, when I think back to Mia Hamm and Michelle Akers and, and Julie Foudy and players like that, I mean, they were unbelievable. And Sun Wen from China and Pichon from France. I mean, these were world-class players. Um, so anybody that thinks that the level isn't high, I just don't think that they've been exposed to it or have gone out or, you know, obviously there's too many comparisons to the men's game. I mean, it's a different set of people and it's like, um, you know, it's, it's a good game, it's an exciting game, so I hope that if people haven't watched it too much, like, that they should tune in. I think that they would be happy and, and really engaged by the level. If there could be one thing that I would change in football, it would be the penalty shootout. I hate penalty kicks. My idea, lose penalty kicks, 
you have uh, five minutes to take a player off, and you play until somebody scores. So I suspect that somebody's going to be scoring when it goes to you know 9v9 or 8v8. So it's just an extra you know 15 minute like absolute to the death game, and I think that there would be tactics involved, and it would just be like this total like test of will for the players that are remaining on the field. I think it would be awesome.